Had gravel delivered today. Just finished uh, fine tuning the bottom of my rubble trench. And the idea here is that the bottom of the trench is level all the way around. It is at its shallowest point, 32 inches deep here, about uh, 42 in the back there. So we're well below frost line for the area. Laying in this perforated French drain, wrapping it with landscape cloth, and then we'll backfill and tamp with gravel until we once again come up here to grade. And then I will pour a reinforced bond beam on top of that, which will be the foundation for the timber frame bathhouse. It's concrete day. I'm building this bathhouse on our new farm so that we can have flush toilet, shower, vanity, washing machine while we're building the main house. And that will give us some uh, comfort uh, infrastructure while things are going, kind of take the pressure off and uh, make it more comfortable to be here while we're in the RV. So I purchased this uh, Yard Max uh, four cubic foot concrete mixer off of Amazon. It's kind of the mid-range between the cheap one you can get and like a commercial daily use sort of model. So we'll see how it performs. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to pick one up for yourself. It's about 270 bucks, something like that. Um, I've got my forms laid out here. I'll give you a, a tour of what's going on here and what's underneath it that got us to this point. And I'm working on a timber frame that will go onto this foundation and then the infill between the timbers will be a combination of cordwood masonry and just classic stone masonry using the volcanic river stone that's right down the river over here so uh, it's going to be about a yard of concrete i'm going to mix and pour doesn't sound like a whole lot but by doing it this way rather than having a truck come in there's a good bit of labor in it and so i'm going to have to kind of hustle to get everything poured without any cold joints and get my anchors set in uh, the locations where the posts are going to come down so that uh, everything's lined up and the timber frame will go in easily without a lot of fidgeting and adjustments. So I'll go ahead and uh, run you through what's going on here and then we'll get to mixing. So I used this John Deere 4400 with this uh, backhoe attachment to excavate for this project. So the perimeter is a trench that's three feet deep in the bottom of which there is a French drain. That French drain begins in that back corner, goes around. So it's a perforated black flexible French drain pipe that converts to a non-perforated pipe about here and then travels out through this trench under those tree roots and then drains into the creek below. There is about 12 yards of concrete or gravel, I'm sorry, in uh, this trench. And then the areas between the walls will backfill with some of the excavated subsoil and then add some more gravel to get up to the height where we'll start working the floor. So what I've done is I've used these two by sixes to describe the perimeter. The outside will be about a seven to eight inch thick, one foot wide bond beam. So a bond beam is a concrete pour reinforced with rebar. So as I'm pouring, I'll lift this rebar into the concrete and it will provide the tensile strength that concrete lacks. At every location where there's going to be a post anchor, I have put some drywall screws and then I've got some survey twine that I'll wrap around and basically have survey line going that way and that will define the corner where the concrete 
anchors will go to accept the posts. Everywhere that I've got something like a post coming down for a door, I have these L brackets with some hardware attached and I'll basically embed that into the concrete and bring it to that pre-marked L anchor line there. So this will be one of the front door posts, the other one over there. And there are a few more where there's one over there for where the shower wall comes in. I've got one here for the corner that will go in here and that will hold the post upon which the door to the wood-fired sauna will be anchored. And one over there for this closet wall, one back there for this other sauna wall. I have these uh, braces spanning the outside of the pour just while I get the concrete in there. So if I bump things with the wheelbarrow or that sort of deal, we won't throw the whole form out of whack. And then I'll remove those and then run my strings to locate my anchors. We establish the level of this form using a builder's level, just an old school optical builder's level. So all of the corners are at the same height and then everything else is leveled off of that exterior perimeter. This two by six timber, much of it will be reused in the uh, building up of the roof system on the structure. And we'll get all into that later on. So the recipe that I'm going to use is a four part gravel to two part sand and one part Portland cement mixture with as little water as possible. Basically, I'm looking to have this, this mixture be just moistened and that will give it the highest compressive strength and the um, least shrinkage and cracking in the final result, which should provide a pretty high strength foundation for this building. I have a couple of tools ready to go. We have a nice long trowel to be able to scrape the top. We'll come back in with an edging tool. It's just like in woodwork, if you have sharp corners, they tend to chip out. And so this will round off and give it that curb edge. The center section I will broom as it's setting up and that will provide a key for subsequent mortar to bond to the bond beam. To lubricate the inside of the form, allowing it to release easily from the concrete pour and have less concrete stuck to it when I go to reuse it later, I'm going to use the ubiquitous cooking spray, which contains canola oil, certainly genetically modified, coconut oil, palm oil, soy lecithin, dimethyl silicone, and therefore, in my opinion, it's not food. I don't use this stuff for cooking, but it's a uh, great aerosolized lubricant that I can spray on the inside of this form. And uh, if you don't want to use this product, you can use anything from linseed oil, diesel fuel works pretty well as a releasing agent on a concrete form, but just something to prevent the pores in the wood from pulling the mortar in the concrete into their pores and making them stick to the pore. The replacement concrete mixer arrived and this one actually works. getting ready to pour. I've gone back through and checked the levelness of the form after waiting for 10 days or so. And everything looks good.
corner complete. I've changed my recipe a little bit. I went to a three, two, one. So three parts gravel, two parts sand, one part Portland. Add a little more water for workability. And I just wanted to set this corner post because this is really a three man job that I'm doing myself. And I was starting to set up over here. So I finished this corner and set this. I have these screws set at the mark. So the anchor point is three inches away from the outside of the bond beam. And so I basically went off of those. I'll pull strings at the end and see how everything's looking. But the challenge now is to work from both sides of the pour so I don't get a cold joint and kind of work it around the rest of the way. But that's one corner in. I'm almost halfway through with my pour. And it's going to take pretty much all of the daylight that there is. But what I'm doing is I'm filling these forms. Got my mix dialed in. You know, so it's about as stiff as it can be. Yet still be workable. So once I've got the form filled, I tap it. Get everything nice and flush to the form, settled in, so I don't have any voids, and then just get enough material that I can screed off the top of the forms. pour is complete. We used every last bit of daylight. But as you can see by the survey string, all of our post anchors are well positioned. So we're ready for a timber frame. We'll let this set up overnight and most of tomorrow, and then I'll pull forms in the afternoon. And we'll give it several days to cure before we stick anything on it. I still have some work to do on the timber frame, but we're getting close. Two days after the pour, all the forms are out. I pulled some of them in the outside forms yesterday but the concrete was still a little soft to wrench around to get those enclosed interior forms in. So this will be the front door, the door here. That stem will be for the vanity. That stem is for the shower. This one for the toilet. And there'll be a door here at the corner. This will be the wood-fired sauna. In here, this wall will be rock. Maybe that one. We'll see how the rock gathering process goes. And then the wood stove will sit about right there. And then this space over here will house the mechanical infrastructure. So batteries for the solar system, charge controller, uh, inverter, the pump for the water system, the boiler for the hot water. And then there will be a door, probably a barn door over here. And the washing machine will also go in this space. So probably washing machine in this corner, everything else against that back wall. And then I'll put the IBC tote back in this area that will harvest all the rainwater off the roof and run this system.